Yo, what's up? KRT Life here. KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all of that. Today, we're talking about the Arc'teryx Beta AR. Bought this 10 years ago, and now all of a sudden, it's cool. Makes me feel kind of old. Coming up next. All right, so today's video is all about the Arc'teryx Beta AR Gore-Tex Pro Jacket. Now, this jacket right here, I literally bought this about, I wanna say 12 years ago is when I bought this jacket, and it's been through hell and high water with me. It's been on many ski trips, hiking, backpacking, Iceland. I mean, all over the world I've gone in this jacket, especially when I needed something that will work in extreme, harsh, um, you know, your life depends on it type of climates and conditions. And this jacket has worked. But in recent years, I have been seeing more and more people wearing this as a fashion jacket. Like, and just the other day, I was scrolling through the IG feed and YouTube and stuff like that, and I saw more and more videos utilizing this outdoor gear as a piece of fashion city garment. And it perplexed me because a few um, uh, uh, a few years ago, I did a video that was to the contrary. I literally said that this is probably one of the worst jackets you can wear in the city. And I still kind of stand by that. So let's go ahead and talk about this jacket. So the Arc'teryx Beta AR jacket is a $600 Gore-Tex Pro shell. Now, a shell is a jacket that is literally just this shell Gore-Tex material. There's no insulation or anything else in this jacket. So think of this as a really expensive raincoat. The pros of this jacket are it's 100% windproof and waterproof. It has sealed and taped seams and the zippers are sealed. The pit zips are sealed. It's about as water and windproof as you can possibly get in any like garment that I've ever owned. It's the best of the best of the best. It's super lightweight and very packable. Like this material, like when you're, you know, really tired and you've been hiking or, you know, skiing or something like that or doing whatever like really exhausts you, you don't even feel like you're wearing this thing because it is so light. And the entire system, which we're gonna talk about, is a very, very lightweight system. It's also extremely durable. Now, like I said, I have taken this thing on I can't even tell you how many trips at this point because I've had it for over a decade and this thing still literally looks brand new and it's been to, through like really, really rough conditions. I, I've never washed this, not even once in over a decade. And I actually had a really, really gnarly crash wearing this exact um, jacket. I was skiing in, God, I can't remember if I was in A Basin or Breckenridge or something like that, but I was uh, snowboarding and I was going about 20, 30 miles per hour-ish, and I took a really, really, really nasty tumble on some really hard pack, and it almost, I, I kind of think it knocked me unconscious. I really can't remember what happened, but I remember seeing the world go up and down, up and down, and when I came to, I was like, oh my God, like, am I still in one piece? And I remember like getting up, and I was like, wow, all right, I'm not dead, but this jacket was 100% intact, and uh, man, it was a really, really bad crash, y'all, and this jacket survived. So the cons of this uh, Gore-Tex Pro material that Arc'teryx used on it is that, now this is an older one, the new ones might be a little different. I don't really find this jacket very comfortable. The Gore-Tex Pro material is really, really loud, and it just makes that crumply, crumply, crumply sound like whenever you're like walking around and doing stuff, and that, kind of just gets on my nerves when I wear it in an urban environment. I don't really notice it that much when I'm like, you know, out doing stuff like in the woods, but in the city for some reason that just kind of like just doesn't feel right to me. The shape of the jacket, I don't really find it very flattering. It has like a big puffy like bag kind of feel when I'm wearing it. 
And I have other rain jackets that I feel like are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion than this jacket. This is a decent looking jacket, but to me it's not the best looking jacket. And I think that the reason why it's not very comfortable to me is once again goes back to the cut, but majority of that is because of these pit zips. Now these pit zips are great when you're out hiking and you're trying to overheat, or not trying to overheat, and when you're possibly overheating and you're trying to ventilate and get some of that like hot sweat from your armpits. These are great because you can open that up and you know you can just vent out a little bit and stay somewhat cool. But um, as far as wearing it on a daily basis, it's just, yeah, the, the pit zips, I kind of feel them there and it feels like there's constantly something in my armpits and it's just not the most, most comfortable jacket in the world to me. Now, like I said, the cut might be, well, no, I know this for a fact. The cut on the newer jackets is different than the cut on the older jackets. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see like the newer jacket has like, a, it goes kind of up like that across the chest versus this has that, and that piece and that piece. And yeah, there's a lot going on with these older jackets. But I just don't feel it very flattering as far as aesthetically, and I don't find it very comfortable either. But as far as durability goes, massively durable jacket more than a decade and uh it's doing pretty good now there are some areas where there is some um uh, how do i say things that i guess are falling apart <laughs> all right there i say that this thing is super super durable i know right now for some reason right in this area on this and my um adam this these two areas are coming loose and this is where all the pressure from pulling these little uh zip thing not zips but these pull tabs tight i guess is just worn them out after like years of use, but I don't even use those that much, so I don't really know how that would have happened. And then if you notice on this arm right here, on the inside, this material right here is kinda, I could probably just melt this and cut this off and it'd be okay. But that's coming through, coming apart a little bit. So there are some minor things going on with this jacket after 10 years of really, really, really hard substantial use, but for the most part, this jacket, I mean, I am 100% impressed with it, but I still don't really think it's a fashion jacket, but I mean, I know y'all will argue that to me. Uh, but let me know if you know y'all have the newer jacket and is it not as sounding as this jacket that I own? Now, because this is the shell, let's talk about the rest of these parts that I own. This is a, a, a system. So you have base layers and then like this would be considered something like that's like a base layer. This could be a mid layer or a standalone. And then under here is my Adam LT uh, hoodie. And then right here I'm wearing my Adam LT vest. Now let's go ahead and talk about these real quick because I just wanted to add this into the video because I feel like this whole system together is amazing. So this is the hoodie right here, Adam, like super, super lightweight material, um, is water resistant, not proof. Um, very, very, uh, it's wind resistant, not proof, very lightweight and keeps you extremely warm for its weight. Like this thing is just an awesome go-to piece for me for years, for running, for camping, hiking, like whatever it might be, I wear this thing all the time. And that also goes with this. I literally just finished running in this before I started filming this video. And this is the uh, Adam LT vest. And once again, it's more of the same durability and lightweight warmth and comfort that you get with both of these and this entire uh, setup. So the pros real quick of the Adam LT vest and jacket vest and jacket is that they're super lightweight packable they dry fast they're warm and they're comfy and i literally have really no cons that i can say about the lt um hoodie and jack no vest and hoodie um but the one con that i can't think of if i had to be nitpicky is that campfires are not a friend of this type of material or that gore-tex jacket when you have those little like uh what you call it little fire dust things fly around be careful when you're wearing these type of things because as you can see, if you look closely, I have a lot of burn marks on uh, some of my gear where, you know, the campfire has kind of just like scorched up a little bit and there are a couple of flyers and they landed on me and they melted my jacket. And I 
fixed it with some, um, what do they call it, scene repair stuff that you get from REI. So in conclusion, the Arcteric system, the uh, Beta AR, the Atom LT, and the Atom LT vest um, is a phenomenal uh, outdoor solution to stay warm and dry and cozy in the worst of the worst that Mother Nature can throw at you. It is expensive though. I mean, you're talking about $600 for the shell, uh, another, what is it, uh, $260 for the hoodie, and then another $175 for this vest. But when you put the whole trifecta together, I mean, it's almost like the most bulletproof nature armor that you can wear. And not necessarily bulletproof, but element proof. And uh, yeah, I think it's totally worth, some, worth the money. It's one of those things where it's like buy once, cry once. And literally you can buy this one time in your life and now I've been using this for more than a decade. So I am extremely happy. I'm your brother Reza. This is KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all that. Hope this video uh, gives you some insight of what super long-term use of these Arcteris garments is like. Because, uh, yeah, these things are really good, and I put them really through the ringer. All right, see y'all in the next vlog. Peace.